Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. The question about splenectomy and who is the best candidate for surgery really um, uh, is more of an issue of the patients in their own in terms of they want to try to find a strategy that doesn't require any medications or any other intervention. Younger patients appear to be more responsive. The, the response rates in younger women are more likely to be in the range of 65%. Older patients, particularly at past the age of 50 and 60, the response rates to splenectomy are less. Now, laparoscopic splenectomy done by a very experienced laparoscopic surgeon is very safe. It has much lower morbidity. It has a slightly lower risk of thrombosis, but portal vein thrombosis and thrombotic events still occur with laparoscopic surgery. Um, but, and, and a good laparoscopic surgeon is very good in searching out to make sure there are no accessory spleens. And it's remarkable in some of the better reports from laparoscopic surgeons who do splenectomies that a significant portion of individuals already have accessory spleens in place. So a good review of the abdomen it should be part of the procedure of laparoscopic splenectomy. But it, the outcomes are as good in terms of ITP as doing the classic open splenectomy. So I look at the individual and I ask them really what their own individual goals. Patients are frequently hesitant to surgery, but after a period of time, if they're finding difficulty in maintaining themselves uh, on the medications, either compliance or lifestyle, I do recommend splenectomy. We discuss it. There is no really definitive way to predict who's going to respond. There are some studies being done in Europe, predominantly, looking at indium-labeled platelet studies that suggest that if, in fact, the predominant clearance of platelets is in the spleen, the response rates are higher, but still close to about a third of the, thirty percent of those individuals still will not obtain a um, an appropriate response of splenectomy, and in, and the reverse, if there's hepatic uptake, um, more like two thirds of the patients do not respond to splenectomy. But it should be notable that in fact, still about thirty percent of individuals in these studies who undergo splenectomy will respond, even though they have hepatic uptake. And the reason for that is, in fact, that the spleen is also a very important organ in the manufacturing of antiplatelet antibodies. It's been shown over 30 years ago by Robert McMillan, and new studies show that, in fact, even in patients who fail anti-CD20 therapy using rituximab and other anti-CD20 agents, that in the spleens of these patients who fail, they find plasma cells in the spleen able to make antiplatelet antibodies. Although you do get two-thirds durable response as a procedure such as a laparoscopic splenectomy, although generally low risk, is not without risk entirely. So the perioperative mortality is about 1%, and uh, the morbidity of this procedure in terms of infection, bleeding, and postoperative complications is estimated anywhere from 9% uh, to about 20%. Um, and then, once you have your spleen out, you do have a long-term lifetime risk of sepsis, and also thrombosis, and also atherosclerosis. So, in our data that is being presented um, at this ASH meeting, where we looked at health claims from a six-year experience in the United States with a newly diagnosed ITP patients, in our data, we show that in six years, between 2007 in 2012, the end of 2012, only 7% of patients with newly diagnosed ITP got their spleens out. So highly effective treatment, not without risk, and long-term toxicity uh, can lead to a long-term remission in two-thirds of patients, but only 7% of patients in this day and age are getting their spleens out. So I think that reflects what the current practice is of US physicians. But we can't tell them it's 100%, and we can't tell them there's no complications of splenectomy, because there are some. And uh, so, so many people will shy away from splenectomy. 
Sometimes you have a patient come in who's very sick and you can just tell they have a very, very aggressive form of ITP. They don't respond well to steroids. They're not, uh, you know, they're not really just not responding to the treatments you want them to. And they bleed a lot. And sometimes I'll recommend early splenectomy for a patient like this just because I really think it's important to get their platelet count up as quickly as possible, uh, particularly when they have bleeding uh, complications.